Oh, what's going on guys? Men Elite here, back, playing some Final Fantasy 16, the Rising Tide DLC expansion. We have got a bunch of side quests to do, so let's just crack on. My lord, might I have a moment of your time? I would beg of you a service. Certainly. What is it? It's a long story. But before we get to that, would I be right in thinking Lady Shula told you about the Witch from the North? She did indeed. Yes. She said that your ancestors found her here, and that it was she who taught them the spell to stop time. She was like Walius, you know. A dominant. The Warden of Ice. My great-grandmother suspected as much. She cared for the poor woman when the end was near. And it was she whose duty became to attend her grave. A duty that was passed down to me. I see. And the service you would beg of me? Well, until recently, the path to the grave had long been blocked by a fallen tree. But when our woodsmen finally found time to move it, they quickly realized it might have been better had they not. On Monsters? trying to clear the rest of the path, you see, we discovered that a flock of bloodthirsty beasts had claimed the cliffs beyond. None of us was a match for them. But you, my lord have proven your strength many times over. Would you drive them away for us? Of course. I'll see the path is made safe. Thank you, my lord. The grave is in a place called Witch Drop. To reach it, one must turn left at the Winged Wains, then follow the path around to the right, deep into the forest. Why so far from Haven? It was where she lived. When our ancestors first came to Missidia, they found her there, in an old abandoned village. And it was her heartfelt wish to return there in death. So when she passed away, my great-grandmother had a stone erected for her, on the cliffs overlooking the place she once called home. How thoughtful. Well then, no time like the present. Left at the ships, then round to the right, you said. Just so. Thank you once again, my lord. I will join you at the grave anon. Hmm. I'm actually shocked by uh, how many side quests there actually is on this game. Um, I thought they would have all come before the conclusion of, of the story. Unless it's not the conclusion of the story, but... Got the rising tide mister, complete. Over here. Please, mister, you've got to help us. The village is in danger if someone doesn't do something. Oh, you should have seen it. See what? Stop. Take a deep breath and tell me everything. Starting with your name. Sorry. My name's Eric. When you went up to the air of hours with Miss Shula, I well, I followed you. <sighs> you could have been killed. Lady Shula told us you lot were great warriors, so I thought I'd be all right if I stayed close, like. But then I lost track of you in the woods, and that's when I saw it. Saw what? A great, big, dripping, drooling monster. Spitting out great spouts of water, it was, that were tearing up the ground and cutting down trees. Spouts of water? I don't recall seeing anything like that in the forest. Well, I did, and I don't ever want to see it again. You'll get rid of it, won't you? All right. All right. If this creature is as terrible as you claim, it could well pose a threat to the village. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, mister. It was over by the swift one that I saw it. Maybe it's still there. Then that's where I'll start my search. But this time, you're going to stay here. Understood. I wouldn't go through those gates for ten hundred gil. Not with that thing out there. Ten hundred. Good luck, though. <laughs> it's not even a lot of gil.
You wouldn't happen to have some time on your hands, would you, Clive? Only I was wondering if you might help me with something else. Don't tell me. Another unruly dominant. Not quite, but a dangerous foe nonetheless. It promises to be quite a hunt. Care to join me? Why not? All right. Tell me about our quarry. A fiendish, cold-blooded beast known as a Gifra. Normally, we leave such animals well alone, and for good reason. But I have an even better reason to want its tongue. It, its tongue? If you'll permit me, Tributary, I can explain. Certainly, Yamila. It's been over a week since my sister gave birth to her first child, yet she still isn't back on her feet. We've tried everything to restore her spirits, physics and nostrums, the laying on of hands and of leeches, but all to no avail. The healers tell me there's only one hope left. A broth as potent as its ingredients are perilous to procure. It isn't only Yamila's sister who stands to benefit from this, by the way. There's her baby to think of, and Walias, too. She'd agreed to be his wet nurse, you see. I'd be glad to help. Thank you. Our hunters have no shortage of skill, but this task calls for more than that. And it won't be achieved through weight of numbers, either. The Givra is as wary a foe as it is a deadly one. Two hunters might catch it unawares, but any more than that, and it would pick up our scent a league away. Then it is decided. The two of you will go, while Jill and I occupy ourselves here. Ah, great. We might help prepare the broth. That would be most kind of you. Come then, Clive. The river of time flows fast, and so must we. There's a giver that has claimed the ruins at the foot of the mountain as its hunting ground. We are. But as I say, they are wary creatures. We'll need suitable bait to draw it out. The flesh of a forest ibex should suffice. To the forest, then. at the gate but they won't be coming any closer Was easy. I should buy Haven some time at least. Clive, you all right? Fine. We've taken care of the immediate threat. Oh, thank the tides. I was worried I was going to lose you both. Till all he. Oh, he took a sudden turn for the worse just after you left. What? Is he? No, he's hanging on. I fear the Tombury King may have begun the cursing ritual again. In earnest this time. Uh-oh. I can't imagine there being here as a coincidence. I think it might be happening on this very mountain. If it is, it won't be for long. Get back to Talor. I'm going up. My thanks. I shall pray for both of you. Another group. They don't look very regal.
easy. I like how the Tomberries look, to be fair. Looks like that's the last of them. Is the angry king gonna turn up now? Out here anyway. But beast men do like dark places. Uh. In we go. Hello, Mr. Tonbury King. Oh, hello. Well, I'll be damned. Not you, big. Even got his little crown. Definitely looks way different to the uh, Seven Rebirth Tombury King. Oh my days! Was not expecting that! <laughs> okay, be quicker to kill them all! Damn! That's a lot of grudges! That's actually some great early damage though.
Vamos. Let's get the damage in. Yeah. Boom. I'll get me the second time. Should be broken. Is that the hunter? Uh, it's you, uh, Nasser Savior. Are you all right? What happened? I was tracking an ibex when a great spout of water struck me square in the back. Sent me flying all the way across the clearing. Did you see what made it? No. All I heard was a noise. An ear-splitting din. Might this be the culprit? Oh, I hate these guys. You've caused enough trouble. Too hard if I actually. No. He can't have been the real thing. Well, that wasn't too bad. I don't think that was it. Hardly a threat to the village, but you can't blame the boy for being scared. You made that look a lot easier than it was. Do you think that was the beast which attacked you? No. That thing? Not a chance. Would have heard it coming illegal. Knew it. And the blast of water that hit me was beyond anything an Archelon can manage. Oh. A boy from the village sent me in search of a beast that could conjure such things, but... That's it. That's oh, the noise I heard. Dear. Sounded like it came from the ruins. I'll go. You head back to Haven and see a healer. Something's been busy. Whatever this creature is, it's out for blood. But it's not having ours. Stay close, Toggle. Is 
Is it a flan? No, it's not. It's in one of these. Balos. Balos. That's not fair. Copy over. There we go. Fingers crossed that's the last of them. Either way, I should let Irik know the dangerous past. For now at least. I can't even see where it is. Looks like that's the last of them. Now, where's the grave? This must be it. My lord. 
Thank you for making the path safe again. Ize. Was that her name? Yes. Hardly the most fitting tribute for a dominant, is it? A rough-hewn stone with naught but a given name engraved on it. But my ancestors had only been here a matter of weeks when she passed. Every day was a struggle to survive. They had neither the time nor the energy to devote to a more elaborate memorial. Yet they spared what they could to grant her wish, that even in death she might continue to watch over her home. She lived down there then, in the ruins. That's right. They were once the living quarters for those who served up in the temple. When the Northern Thanes sent her here to weave her spell, this was where she and her retinue stayed. There were priests, handmaidens, and a knight sworn to shield her from harm. Of course, they were all gone by the time my ancestors arrived, fled or dead in the Western Wars. All except his A. Who remained till the end. Alone. Indeed. At least, that is the story as it's been handed down in Haven. But there is an epilogue to the tale. One known only to Lady Shula and myself. Some years after Issei's passing, you see, my grandmother came here to tend the grave and found a stranger kneeling before it, a knight, dressed head to toe in plate. She asked of him who he was and whence he had come, but received no answer. The only words he spoke were, tell me true, whose grave is this? So she told him of how her people had met and cared for Issei, and how she had died. His only reaction was to stare up at the air of hours in silence. Then he left, never to be seen again. You said he was wearing plate. Was it black and gold? N <laughs> Do you know something of him? When we went up to the air of hours to unravel the spell, we were set upon by a shade in the shape I'm of a key, knight though. in full plate. It manifested in front of the Vare, and in its ether, I felt Shiva, the witch. <laughs> you think this may have been the same man my great grandmother met? He says knight. I don't know. Maybe. I'm gonna say yes. All I can say for sure is it was intent on protecting her creation. Or perhaps her spirit. What remained of her ether, preserved in the Vare. Perhaps his spirit too became enraveled in her spell. Frozen in an eternal vigil. Till we ended it. If the shade you fought was Issei's knight, then ending it was the greatest gift you could have given him. Now he can return to the sea, to be with his lady once more. And if his spirit should ever return here to visit her grave, I shall ask his name, that I might carve it in the stone next to hers. That they might be together, once and for all. Oh, I think that was a bit overkill, but I got the job done. Farewell. Return to the sea, and to the clouds rise again. We 
have our bait then. What next? Next, we pay a visit to the dark gate to pick some local weed. It'll help disguise our scent. Some weed, eh? Is this it? Aye, that's the stuff. Crush the leaves between your fingertips and rub them on your clothes. Uh, if you insist. You could have warned me about the smell. Like corruption, isn't it? We'll have an honor guard of flies before long. But it'll stop the Gavra from noticing us. Its nose will tell it we're nothing but a feast for worms. Oh, I feel so much better. Ugh. We can wash it off afterwards. If there's one good thing about the Gavra choosing the ruins for its hunting ground, it's that there's plenty of fresh water nearby. Fresh kill. But not a Givras. The wounds are too clean, too small. I don't even know what Givras is. Oh, I do. I just don't recognize the name. Predator's tracks. You can clearly make out the claws. And not just any claws. These belong to a Givra. There's no mistaking them. We lay the bait here. Let's hope our friend is hungry. Still no sign. Patience, Clive. Hunting's not something you can rush. Have you stalked these beasts before? Once. Givers have passed, so the job called for a bearer. But even with my knack, it was a close-run thing. Not many leaders would take such risks for their people. Says the man who battled an icon to save a boy he barely knew. It is the way of the moats of water to use what gifts we've been given for the good of all. And I gather it's your way too. It was Sit, the man whose name I bear. He fought for his people and their future with every fibre of his being. I'm just following in his footsteps. In many ways, you remind me of him. Me? You're confusing daring with desperation. Quiet. Something's coming. Oh, look, it's a little dragon. Our guest has finally arrived. Shall we greet him? It'd be rude not to. Hello there. Don't let it escape.
Kill a dragon with a dragon. Did we level up? No. So close. You weren't exaggerating when you said they were dangerous. They're forces of nature, all right. And with this one's passing, the river of life has calmed. O oh, roaring torrent, son of storms, may your spirit run free in the open ocean. This flesh I claim, that your gifts might rain down upon us this day, and our river flow in spate once more. Well then, let's return to the village. We must get this tongue to your miller before it spoils. Tributary, my lord, did all proceed as planned? It did. It did. Yeah. One giver tongue, as promised. Oh, thank you. I shall add it to the broth at once. By your leave, tributary. If there is anything else that we can do to help, you need only ask. No, no. You've already done more for my family than I can ever repay. Just as you have, Clive, for my family. I only regret that I have nothing to offer you in return but my gratitude. It's more than enough. Besides... I'm no less grateful to you. For what? For welcoming my friends and I into your midst. For showing us how your people live. For reminding me that the world we strive to create, where bearers can live alongside their fellow men in peace and comfort, is no mere fantasy. I'd hardly call it comfort. Every day is a struggle. Though we do at least struggle together, it's true. As must we all. I only ask that ye remember the cost of using your gifts as a bearer. I know that you feel it's your duty to do whatever you can to help your people. But you have a child to think about now. And while Ace has lost enough, I shall bear that in mind. That's all I ask. Oh, and if there is anything else that we can do to help, well, you know. Thank you. Truly. That we level up. Clive, is it done then? It is. I was going to ask if there had been any change into Law's condition, but judging by that smile on your face, I think I already know the answer. You do? To Law, he's back. Thank you, my lord. I can never repay you for everything you've done for me. I owe you my life. I'm just glad the curse is lifted. There is one thing I'd like to know, though, if you don't mind my asking. What made you seek the Tombury's help in the first place? Oh, that, well, I, 
you deserve to know. It was years ago now, back in my tracing days. The sons of Greek had arrested me in Oriflam, chained me up in a lightless cell with a great sword hung over my head, ready to fall if I didn't confess. Well, they never said to what. I didn't, of course. So eventually they just let me go. And I never told a soul. Try to forget it ever happened. But then you came along and the sight of your sword brought it all flooding back. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't hardly breathe. And I, I thought that if I gave my old chain to the Tombreys, maybe, maybe they could take all that pain away. All that anger. But it only made it worse. Oriflam has fallen. And the men who tortured you likely fell with it. <laughs> if only I'd known, I might have spared everyone a lot of trouble. I'd convinced myself that you were like them, that all outsiders were the same, but you're not. Far from it. Thank you, son. Thank you. You are welcome. All is forgiven. Clive, there's something I need to tell you. After we parted ways on the path to the cloak, I went straight back to Talor and explained to him what you were doing on his behalf. And just like that, his pain began to fade. What do you mean, just like that? The Tombury King would have still been alive. I had to contend with dozens of his minions before I found him. Then... Perhaps one of them warned him of your coming and he broke off his ritual. Or perhaps, perhaps knowing that an outsider was fighting for him was what lifted the weight from Talor's heart. I know from experience that many illnesses are not wholly physical, but... Are you saying I fought it for no reason? Part. Was there ever really a curse then? Was Talor simply suffering from the pain of his memories? And the guilt of what he'd done. Guess we'll never know. What difference it makes. I suppose we'll never know. I <laughs> just said that, Clive. <laughs> Get out of my head. But this much I do know. It was your strength and your selflessness that healed his heart in the end. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell my healer friend when I get home. How many times do we have to tell you? You're back! I am. So? Did you find the fiend that attacked me and young Eirik here? I did. It won't be troubling you anymore. Yes! I knew you'd get it! Only because you warned me of its existence. Not that you should ever have learned of its existence, but... All's well that ends well, I suppose. What was it, anyway? A manifestation of Leviathan's power. When we visited Wallius in the Surge, he was... angry and afraid. The Icon summoned these creatures for his protection. Though why one would be wandering the ruins of Riversmeet, I don't know. Maybe it was looking for his mom. That's why she died, isn't it? The Falls. The Falls? Hi. When they took her baby, she threw herself off the top. We go there once a year to pay our respects. The whole village. Hmm. An eggy is a part of its master's spirit, but... Wallius wouldn't have been aware of what had happened to his mother, would he? Well, either way, you did us a favor putting that thing to rest. Us and Walius. Thank you. Aye. Thanks, mister. All in a day's work. No. It has to 
to be him. Who? What has to be who? If you uh, don't mind my asking. <laughs> it's not your asking, I mind. It's my explaining. But I don't see any other way around it. Just tell us. You see, when a baby is born here, we hold a ceremony to welcome them. The rite of immersion, we call it. But I don't know whether Wallius was ever afforded that courtesy. What is abundantly clear, though, is that my ancestors never welcomed him as one of us. And I want to change that. The problem is, the ceremony requires three ministrators. The baby's parents and a witness. As tributary, the role of witness would normally fall to me. But being Wallius's closest living relative, I must play the role... Then allow me to be witness. So you want me to serve as witness in your stead? That's right. Be an honor. The witness must be a trusty guardian, ready to steer the child through the stormy waters of life and on to tranquility. Which is why I thought of you. It would be my honor. Thank you, Clive. So... If you will serve as mother and I as witness, who will take on the father's role? I have a younger brother. Wait, what? He should be making ready for the rite as we speak, for whether he is or not. <sighs> Let me introduce you. Please do. If he's anything like his sister, I'm sure we'll get on famously. I'll bid him come to the Witten Hall. Will you wait for us there? Gladly. It's good to have them back. Clive, my brother. If it isn't my old mate, Sid. Oh, no. You? Yes. So you do remember Ugh. me, even stripped of my cunning disguise. I'm touched. You two know each other. Yes. My friends and I crossed paths with your brother on our hunt for the Dusk Crystals. During which we saved his life. Three times, was it? Three? Four? Who's counting? All I know is when Shula mentioned she'd called in Sid the Outlaw to help young Walias, I could be sure that the little rascal was in safe hands. I mean, having seen you in action back at the tower, I know exactly what you're capable of. So the mercenary you met in the Sage Spire, that was Clive. And he saved your life. That's a rather different story from the one you told me. And a far likelier one at that. It would appear my family <laughs> oh, owes twice they're late. Whether they admit it or not. Honestly, Fanny, would it kill you to tell the truth once in a while? What? I said sorry, didn't I? How about we save the uh, recriminations until after the ceremony, eh? Speaking of which, what does this ceremony involve exactly? It's simple, really. We each say a short prayer and anoint the child's head with holy water. Nothing too onerous, then. Not about the rite itself, oh. but it does call for some preparation. Should have me do tasks, One aren't you? One of the responsibilities is to collect the holy water, you see. <laughs> How did I know? Three files for the three ministrators, each taken from a particular place. Yeah. Guided by enemies, perhaps? Don't worry, though. It's not as if you have to go alone. I can show you the way. I'd appreciate that. Famiel, you stay here and ready the Witten Hall. Leave it to me. If there's anything Jill and I can do to assist you, we'd be glad to help. Thank you both. Alright then, let's get started, shall we? 
There are three types of holy water that we must collect. The water of the mountain, of the river, and of the sea. We take the water of the mountain from the spring atop Maiden's March. The water of the river from the course that flows through the ruins of Rivers Meet. And the water of the sea from the shallows of Tailwind Bay. Here are the files we'll be using in the ceremony. I'm ready to leave whenever you are. Not another curl. Oh, it's two friends, isn't it? Help! help! What help? Nobody's coming to... Help? We're here to help. Keep its attention on us. Is anyone hurt? Oh, Sid! Thank all the clouds in the heavens you came! You saved us! Again! Would you two care to explain what you're doing up here? The chief sent us. To fetch incense for the ceremony. So the Witten Hall smells nice. For the little Ben. <clears throat> you mean to tell me? You braved this den of deadly beasts for some tree sap. You don't have to do everything he says, you know. Or if you must, at least have the good sense to ask one of our hunters to accompany you. We're sorry. It's fine. Just go back to the village before you get yourselves into any more trouble. Right you are. Oh, and uh, thanks and that. Remind me to give my brother a cuff round the ear when we get back. Gladly. Right then. Let's collect this water, shall we? The rain that falls on the mountain emerges here. In these springs. The source of the river. The source of life. Precisely. Take care not to spill it. This is no wicked monster to fight with this one. A hope. Water of the river represents life. It is constantly moving, constantly changing. A 
And though its course may twist and turn or branch into a thousand separate streams, it always flows in the same direction, from source to sea, beginning to end. Like time. What of Wallius then? When your ancestors froze him, did they remove him from the River of Life? They did. Like an ice-bound pool that didn't thaw for 80 summers. But now he's free to flow again, to live. And you and I shall flow with him. We will. We are all but drops of water in the great river of life. I find that thought oddly reassuring. Go on. A drop of water might seem insignificant on its own. But as a part of a torrent, it can cleave a path through the hardest rock. It makes me believe we humans might just stand a chance. I believe we might. Just one more file to go then. I mean, it's not very well locked if we were just some string. Thank the tides, the weather held. This place can be treacherous when the waves are high. If it weren't for the holy water, no one would ever come down here. I'll be sure to watch my step. Water flows to the sea, then rises into the clouds. Just like life, the end is not the end, only a new beginning. My ancestors chose this place because it was where the first boat landed. And it's a good thing they didn't land closer to the surge. Quite. of the sea. Go. Sure. Everything we need. I still can't help but be awed by it. Oh? All that wave ever made me feel was pity and sorrow for the innocent life trapped inside it. The child my great-grandfather sacrificed to try to change his people's fate. It was wrong. An unforgivable sin. But I often wonder, will my descendants ever forgive me for what I have done? As tributary, I've faced many difficult choices. And though I've always striven to do what's best for my people, here we live in poverty, hidden away from the world. So have my choices denied them a better life, just as my ancestors denied Wallius his. No. You would not forcibly sacrifice one of your people to save the others. You do the best you can for all of them, as do I. We share in their woes, just as we share in their joys. And the most we can do is try to bring them more of the latter. Aye, you're right. And try I shall to bring all of my people a better tomorrow. Wallius included. <laughs> then I wish you luck. If my time with the boy is any indication, he's going to be quite a handful. Then we must start as we mean to go on and give him the very best welcome we can. Where to next, then? Back to the village to find out if my brother has made the.
We have the holy water. Is everything else in place? All ready to go. Told you you could count on me. Then let us begin. Famiel, have your men summon everyone to the Witten Hall. Right you are. Ashula, wait. I don't know the words. Don't worry. There aren't many of them. We'll have time enough to practice before people arrive. Great. I hope I don't have to select the options. Because <laughs> I'll never remember them. My friends, we are gathered here today to welcome this child into our community by the right of immersion, as has been our custom since the first reign. As tributary, I would normally perform the rite with the child's parents, but Walius's mother and father returned to the sea long ago. So I and my brother Famiel shall serve as his family, while the one who returned him to us shall bear witness in my stead. Clive, if you would step forward. You could have at least removed your sword, mate. Like the rain that falls on the mountains tall, are we born? Like the river that flows through the valleys below, do we live? Uh oh. Please don't test me. Oh, hallelujah. The currents run free, do we die? And do the clouds then rise again? Oof. The circle of water is the circle of life. And today, from the heavens falls rain anew. This child, Walius, now joins our stream, and he shall flow with us from the mountains to the sea. <sighs> You played your part to a T, Clive. Thank you. It means a lot to us. I was honored to be asked. And terrified I'd miss. <laughs> now that you're part of the family, young Walias, my lad. Uncle Samuel can teach you the ways of the world. <laughs> oh, no, he can't. Eh? Don't be so hasty. Your brother's knack for self-preservation might serve him well. Ha! You are never going to let me live that down, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to raise Walius as if he were my own. Teach him everything I know about life, our people, and our past. 
But with all the mother crystals gone, he will grow up in a world without comforts. One where we only have ourselves and each other to rely on. I'd say your people are better prepared than most to survive in such a world, Shula. To thrive, indeed, under your guidance. Only if nature continues to smile on us. If we were to lose her gifts, we'd be left with nothing at all. Yes. But it needn't come to that. Not if we can stop the spread of the blight. So long as we can save a single patch of soil, we can plant the seeds for a new world. One where we can all be free. Perhaps then we might finally be able to step out from behind our curtain, eh? Till that day comes, I wish you good tide. Thank you. We should be on our way. Well, you be careful out there. Aye, you steer clear of trouble now. <laughs> Likewise. Must be the first outsiders to have witnessed that right in over a century. Wallius has been waiting for it for nearly as long. <laughs> he seemed pleased to be finally rejoining the family. Now all we have to do is save that family. To change our river's course. Well guys, that is it for the Rising Tide DLC for Final Fantasy 16. Um massively massively enjoyed it uh it had some really fun fights especially with leviathan uh story wise it was excellent um and i just hope you guys have enjoyed it um that is sadly going to be it for my final fantasy 16 playthrough unless they decide to release any future dlc for it you know i will cover it and i'll add it to the playlist uh, but for any Final Fantasy fans out there, be sure to check out my Final Fantasy VII Rebirth playthrough or my Final Fantasy VII Remake playthrough or even my Crisis Core playthrough. You guys have been awesome. Appreciate the love and support. I'll hopefully see you in another video. Bye for now. Bye.